Don't make me over Now that I do Anything for you Don't make me over Now that you know How I adore you Don't pick on the things I say The things I do Just love me with all so it's my an honor to be a part of you. The way that I love you I'm begging don't make me over Now that I can't Make it without It's just an honor to be on a show like this Now to sit back and enjoy Many classic Dionne Warwick songs Performed by some of today's Greatest artists And many legendary stars In a salute to the one And only Dionne Warwick If I am in January 2006, stars from the music stage and screen turned out to perform and pay tribute to Dionne Warwick and her 45-year-long career. Dionne's solo career began while she was still at college and singing background on demo records for songwriters and producers. It was during one of those sessions that she first met Burt Bacharach and Hal David. I met Dionne at a rehearsal for a background group that was going to sing behind the drifters. I think the song was a song I wrote with uh, Bob Hilliard called Mexican Divorce. And there were four, um, four girls in the group, you know. They, they were brilliant. They made a great sound. Um, you had Dion, you had her sister Dee Dee, cousin Myrna, and uh, Aunt Sissy. Of course, that's Sissy Houston. And, um, they just made a splendid sound, you know? I mean, they were so musical. They all are. But Dion kind of stood out just the way she, um, she looked. Uh, it's great high cheekbones. Um, she just had a look like maybe of a, something very special. Uh -huh. Couldn't tell that she was the best singer, because they all sounded great. Well, Dion wanted to sing, do some demos for us, asked us. And we invited her up to, to uh, Famous Music, where Bert and I had an office. And she sang for us. And she was just unbelievable. You know, here, here was, I mean, I, I'll never forget seeing her. I mean, she always had that great face. Uh, and she came up and she was wearing torn jeans. Uh, and she wasn't made up and her hair wasn't fantastic. But her face was fantastic, and with those great high cheekbones. And then she started to sing, and, you know, she was magical. She is magical. She was special. It was like we had a home run. Took her into a studio, made a demo. I think it was Make It Easier on Yourself, and um, that she was good. And the publisher, Famous Music, Eddie Wolpe, and the head of it, sent it off to uh, Jerry Butler. And, and Jerry Butler loved it. It came out and recorded it. And Dion heard the record. And she was heart sick, angry, angry, heart sick. She said, that's my song. That's my song. How can you give that to Jerry Butler? And, and, and we had to explain, you know, the publisher goes, we were making demos with her. And, and this was supposed to be a commercial record. And well, she was very angry. So we went ahead and got her recording contract with the Scepter Records, where Dion had such enormous success. And we sat down to write songs just for Dion. And the first one we wrote for her, and the first one recorded for her, was Don't Think Me Over which turned out to be not only her first hit, but a, just a world-class hit. I was still in school, and my mother was very adamant about the fact you will finish your education. And uh, it was sort of a pre-graduation gift. 
was Don't Make Me Over, my first record. Don't make me over. I don't ever remember being excited about a singer, especially a singer doing my songs, as I was about Dion. I, I, I didn't know, because one doesn't know that it was going to be a big hit or not, but I knew I wanted to be with her forever. Marie Dion Warwick was born in Orange, New Jersey, into a gospel music family. Her father was a gospel record promoter for Chess Records, and her mother managed the Drinkard Sisters, a gospel group consisting of her relatives. She started singing in the choir at the age of six at the St. Luke's Methodist Church in Newark, New Jersey. After graduating from high school in 1959, she earned a music scholarship to the Hart College of Music in Hartford, Connecticut. As a teenager, she formed a singing group called the Gospel Heirs with her sister Dee Dee, Myrna Utley, Sylvia Shimmerwell, and Carol Slade. I, I guess um, God blessed me and the rest of my family. I come from a singing family. And uh, I guess this is the way it was predestined to be. Absolutely, music was so much a part of our family because every time we had Thanksgiving dinner, it was usually at Dion's house. I was my older sister, and we all came together. And before we left it, we were all singing. Everybody was singing in church, you know, and, every, and we just had such a good time. So it, music was embedded in us, and that was just one of our things that we did. My grandfather, he was a minister, of course, I think you know. Um, my father was a, his, well, of course, his son, he was a deacon at the church. My mother's father also was a deacon. And my grandmother, as a missionary, she was a missionary and nurse there, and the mother of the church. So, I mean, where else do we go? <laughs> Dion was in my choir, and Dee Dee. Both of them were in my choir. And uh, she could sing, she couldn't help but sing. Everything around her was singing, you know what I'm saying? Her mother sang first in church, and uh, she started to sing in the choir and whatnot. But Dion wasn't really that, that church, she didn't want that church thing, she wanted this, you know. She wanted a career.
Following the success of Don't Make Me Over, Scepter Records released Dion's first album, filled with many of the original Burt Bacharach and Hal David demo songs, and Dion left college to embark on a full-time singing career. After only her first single, the former background singer had become a star, and within two years went from hit record to hit record to hit record. She became the first black female artist to record 12 consecutive top 100 singles. Classic Burt Bacharach and Hal David songs, such as Anyone Who Had a Heart and Walk On By, made Dion America's top selling female artist. So Don't Make Me Over was out, and I recall just falling in love with the song, first of all, because it was such a soulful, soulful song. And obviously her voice was really something unique and different at the time, you know, because it, there were not a lot of uh, solo females at that point. So she brought a whole new uh, sort of uh, um, trend to the fore foreground in terms of rock and roll or pop. When I first heard her voice, I said, I said, she's got a good sound. She's got a nice, commercial, sweet sound, easy listening. The songs are good. And it was sort of like, it was sort of like a thing that, hey, this, this girl's got it. You know, she's got that magical voice. She's always had it. Um, it's like immediately recognizable. You know, it's her. I mean, you know, it's Dusty. You know, it's Dion. You know, it's Aretha. You know, it's Gladys. There are some voices like that. And, um, and there are other voices that you say, who is that? You know, it sounds great, but who is it? I truly believe the first song that really kind of messed me up was, was The Look of Love, because that was a big hit. It was part of a film, you know, and all of that. And, I, and, I, and so it kind of drew me in, the, the melody. But it wasn't just the comp The composition was amazing. I mean, obviously, but the performance and the voice that went with that was such a marriage that I had never heard anything quite like that. I mean, I, this was a new kind of black act as far as I was concerned. I mean, I had heard, you know, like um, uh, uh, some, some Smokey Robinson and some, some other acts, some, some funk, some other kinds of things, but I had never really heard this kind of song done by black artists and a woman. The look of love is in your eyes. A look, your smile can't disguise. Her records used to just like, just like, brush me on my face with a with a feather every time they touched it. It was so fresh and different, and the backgrounds, and, and Dion's interpretation. You know, she was just like a very natural uh, fit, you know, her and Bert's songs. Because they were really different, you know, than anything that was out there. And uh, she, she had that, I mean, Alfie, give me a break, you know. I mean, there's no, what's more beautiful than that? I think Bert worked on that song for 13 weeks. What's it all about? Alfie. Is it just for the moment we live? That's my girl. I remember when I first started, I made a picture called Alfie, mm -hmm. and Bert Bacharach wrote the song, yes, and did. you went to number one with it, yes, didn't I you? Did. Yeah, that's what. Pull that was the first. But, but I was already a fan. I was already a fan of yours long before that. I appreciate yeah. that. By this time, the songwriting team of Burt Bacharach and Hal David had become synonymous with the songs that Dionne Warwick sang. Something we were, were truly partners. Uh, we were known in our industry as a triangle marriage that worked, um, simply meaning that each one of us brought our expertise to the table, Burt his melodies, Hal his lyrics, and me the ability to bring that to the listening ear. 
The three of us became a trio. I, I think that was quite clear. Uh, we had so much success together. Uh, I, I, I think we influenced the way Dion sang, and I think Dion influenced the way we wrote. I, I think it would have been impossible for it not to happen. I don't think it happened consciously. I just think it happened. It was osmosis. Dion uh, was like um, this most fluid singer, you know, that um, the more I recorded her, the more we wrote for her, and the more I could take her to places musically that in somebody else's hands, somebody else singing, they would have been under labor, duress. I mean, I can just point to a song like Promises, Promises. Dion floats through that. Somebody else. They could be struggling, and they usually were. But she just had a mobility and a fluidity, fluidity that just kind of took her through things. So, but beside that, the more I saw what she could do musically, the more chances I could take, the more risks I could take. Along with the famous songwriting partnerships of Burt Bacharach and Hal David and Lieber and Stoller, there was also another partnership of songwriters emerging that were writing hits for the legendary Tamla Motown label, Holland, Dozier and Holland. Um, he was just very fortunate to find, uh, because it's the type of music that he does, you know, um, he sort of leaned more towards a the, the, the classic type mm -hmm. of songwriting, you know, and he was very, very fortunate to find an artist like Dionne Warwick, whose voice was very classic in sound. You know, she did not have uh, the singling, it wasn't R.B., as you would say. It wasn't done with, with, with typical gospel sounds, although I'm sure she's uh, grew up in the gospel field and, you know, around the same type of music we were, but her voice was a, it's really a classic voice. He was very, very fortunate to find such a unique sounding voice, you know, when I remember when I, remember when I first heard her record. Uh, I thought the song was very, very good and I liked the production, but I was more enthralled with the artist. Dion's uh, range was spectacular. She had to have that range because the songs, the songs demanded that you drop it on Please, you know, that, that, that's octave jumps, you know, <laughs> major second and an octave higher, you know, that's the instantaneously, that's not a natural leap, you know, it's a, it's a very distinctive leap, but it's not a natural leap, you know, for a, a song, a singer's song, really. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bert felt it, and Dion felt it, and, and, and expressed it. How fortunate she, are, she is, and we are to have people to, to give us those kind of songs that we have, you know, because the music really brings out what we have in us, you know. I mean, a lot of people should interpret it the other way, but like like us, we had Holland Doge and Holland, who just tailor made some great songs for us. Same with her with Burt Backright. He just tailor made some of the finest dresses for her to s sing, you know. Back then, it was important for artists to be uh, unique, have unique musical identities, and Dion definitely had that. Uh, and that's what made it work so well, especially with the work that she did with, with Burt Bacharach, because that, for whatever reason, the depth of the composition that he supplied, along with the lyric that Hal David supplied, along with that voice, made that work. That was a serious triad there. The one infamous song that uh, everybody still has a smile on their face, especially in the UK, is called Anyone Who Had a Heart which I had to actually read on the date because they had not completed it when I heard it prior to recording it.
Well, I've had a series of duets with people over the years. Most of us like to sing with other singers and, you know, the, just the lucky ones get the best. And uh, when we were compiling the album, um, putting together some of the stuff that I'd already recorded over the last few years, we thought we needed to add uh, a few new recordings, things that I, you know, duets I had never done before. And, and Dion is an obvious choice for me because she represents a period that I come from too. And her voice remains true. It's such a beautiful, warm voice. And, and I just thought it would be, well, I thought, it, I was lucky. You know, she was in the country and said yes. And so she, in fact, will enhance, I believe, my album greatly. Every time you go away, I always say, this time it's good. I always listen to other people's records and uh, particularly the ones that are hits and then you're often thinking oh why couldn't I get that one first but that's the way it goes and I guess when people listen to We Don't Talk anymore they all think God, I wish you know we'd have got that first we'd have done a better job than him it's one of those things that happens amongst us all the time I'm sure but I did do I never recorded it although I did do a live version of it on an album once I was on tour with Olivia Newton-John and Pat Farah um, they were there were singers doing, duetting together in Australia when I met them. And then, of course, when they came over, they joined me. They were in my backing group, and I used to like to sing with them. And we used to sing, walk on by, walk on by. And uh, so, you know, we, we take from everybody, and I, I hope Dion doesn't mind. And I start to cry. I can hear Dion in my ear as I'm writing a song, as I'm writing lyrics. I can hear her singing it in my ear. I, I, I know what she's going to sound great in and what she may not sound quite as good in. For me, uh, what makes a good song, um, are the words first. Something that I feel comfortable saying and feel have meaning um, and can be applied you know, to what I'm doing or what I've heard from a friend that's happened. That's very, very important to be able to, to relate one-on-one -on -one with words. And of course, a memorable melody, you know, something that anybody can hum. I mean, I've heard truck drivers humming my songs, you know. So it's, it's, a, it's a combination of the two, that they work well together. But I, I look at a lyric first. She sang a lyric and portrayed the story that I wrote and others have written that got exactly, at least in my case, what I was feeling when I wrote it. It's hard to translate that from one person to another, but it always translated with her. to the words as an actor songs I mean voices were one thing but when you hear the story when you see the people in the songs you know that's when you say oh that's wonderful because you see the people she's talking about you see the heartache you see you know it's it's a hard one to wake up today and she's not gonna talk to you no more you you understood every single time she spoke. She, she just says the word sitting on that note in such a personal, melodic, telling way.
that no one can teach you. It's something that's born inside you. When Dion has a unique sound that's like nobody else, Dion is able to um, um, understate, like uh, almost like the those um, handmade boats that you see inside glass, you know, like. Uh, it's so special and so precious, and it's so uh, understated, you know? And um, it's like um, she could have that reserve, that almost like icy reserve, uh, which is great. I mean, ice I don't like, but her ice reserve, yeah. Um, that just kind of understates, understates, and then when it's time to explode, she can explode. Believe it or not, I used to wake up uh, when I got my first apartment, and I love me some Dion because don't make me over and send a message to Michael and uh, anyone who had a heart. The most angelic voice I had ever heard, and her articulation and the, uh, the phrasing, and I would sit up and I would listen at that and uh, when she would go and do, and take a message to my, God, I said, man, she got sweet sounding voice. I've always felt that uh, Dion's had a, a kind of haunting voice and, and the way that she executed a melody was very special. And obviously melody was important. Um, and a lot of times you hear a, a lot of acts do this, do all of the, calisthenics and the technical side of singing something with a lot of chops and uh, there were of course a lot of jazz acts that do that I mean Ella Fitzgerald was good with all the swing stuff but this was something different somebody really singing a melody that was memorable but you know was not boring the melody was was everything the chord changes beneath it and the way the melody was executed with the passion that was in there, that was something special. And it taught me something as, as a singer and as an artist, you know, because I was just starting to sing at that time. Hey, it is possible to make a record that people will like singing the melody. If a song hasn't got heart and feeling, I don't think nobody else will feel it. You know, first of all, you have to feel it yourself. Uh, when we've sat down to write songs, uh, I know when, I, when I'm at the piano, if uh, I could fool around for days uh, before I hit a chord or, 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 or a, a certain feeling that uh, is so, uh, you know, just so dominating and so, uh, what do you call, what would I say? It had to be very um, uh, um, uh, deliberate in, in, its, in its force, you know? Something that gives you goosebumps that a lot of people say, you know? So the sound has to be there with a lot of heart and feeling. That, that is the, 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 uh, the recipe, I think, for having a hit song. It has to be something that uh, you feel, and then somebody else will pick up on the feeling, you know? A great singer cannot make a bad song work, but a great song can make a bad singer a star, and that's for sure. Cannot, cannot budget if the song's not happening. But Dionne's have been blessed, and she's always been dealing with great material, and she knows how to deliver great material, and that's, they belong together. Uh, any team of writers, the Gershwins, um, that sat in a room or across the street from each other, or someone would come with an idea that the other one could relate to, um, is vitally important to a successful songwriting team. And uh, they captured it, undoubtedly. I think also the fact that they were friends had a lot to do with it. And that friendship, of course, developed over a period of time. They had the ability to almost read each other's mind. Um, and there were the moments when Back would write the melody before Howard would write the lyric. 
or how would have the lyric and back directed and or there were those moments they wrote together. So it it really necessitated understanding each other, being on the same page at the same time. And uh, I think that was the magic of their writing. You have magic creativity here. They are timeless, timeless songs because they they are on a 360 level, the greatest music, the greatest lyric, and this incredible voice that brings it all along. Dion was really easy in the studio. I mean, she's, she gets it. She gets it right away. I mean, the fact that we were recording